Send me in search of truth, justice, and grit. Today's show is sponsored by Stephen Turley, Lucas Aramis, Sultan Sair, uh, Sair. I, I don't know. I don't know if that C is supposed to be like a C sound or like a K sound. Zachary Newswinder, and my very unique ability to confuse people while just trying to buy bottled water. At this point, you might be wondering, what is all this costing? I mean, like really, really costing for two weeks. You divide that by thirty-five. And gives you how many dollars it is. $83 for two weeks. That can't be right. It's like $166 a month. That can't be right. But it is right. If you're willing to share a bathroom with seven people and a bedroom with three others, then you can sleep on a bunk for $166 a month in Katow. I never actually ever used the uh, bathroom shower myself. So there are two options for the shower. There's one down by the beach, and there's one that is gross. So you must choose between what is gross and what is kind of socially the acceptable place to shower. And since I'm not one for social conventions, the choice was easy. After using the restaurant, the dive shop, and the hostel's internet to try and upload the jungle video, which was 5.2 gigs, which I kept getting an error message after about 25 hours, I had to make the long trek to the center of the island where there actually is internet. Driving montage in three, two, one. <laughs> The food was actually good, but it was way too hot. So I didn't want to burn my, the insides of my mouth. Once the thing started uploading, I had about three or four hours to kill, with nothing really to do except maybe pull-ups. Pull-up montage in three, two, one. While I was there, I didn't just fool around with the pull-up situation. I fussled a bit with all the parts that came with the wannabe GoPro that I bought. It's called an action camera, but it's actually just a wannabe GoPro. And made a poop. Though one could argue that I made the poop earlier, brought it up there, and merely deposited it there. Whilst on the toilet, I had several thoughts, mostly about flip-flops. You gotta take your flip-flops off outside the restaurant. You gotta take your flip-flops off outside the dive shop. But a supermarket, like a discount supermarket that has a bunch of like cluttered shit in the in the aisles. Must we take our flip-flops off there? The answer is yes. Yes, you do. Even though the aisles are cluttered, and even though there's lots of shit you could drop on your feet and totally detach one of your toes with. And why must we remove our flip floppers? Because of people like this. People with the muddy shoes. Yeah. Or maybe it's a cultural thing. Probably a cultural thing that's based in people with muddy shoes back when they didn't have like paved roads. I think we should change it. I think if there was a voting situation and we all voted, we'd all prefer to keep our flip flops on because the bottom of your feet actually get really dirty inside the store because it's not like they clean it any better. Actually, I would go so far as to say that I'm the one cleaning the store with my clean feet. This also happens to be the place where I got the muesli. A thousand grams you might remember me eating in the last video. It was dry, but it was delicious. I am also excited to announce that I've lined up all the venues for the Australian tour. They're all on my website, and tickets are currently available. The venues are pretty small, and I do expect it to sell out, so don't wait on buying them, because I don't know if I can get extra days in some of the venues. So there's that. Yeah, but I'm going to Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Perth. Click here to check that out. I've also listed the other cities that I'm gonna try to get to that I haven't, but I haven't found venues yet for. If you don't see your city on there, then you should fill out the form, shoot me an email, that sort of thing, because I do wanna meet you very much. And also, Australia is kind of expensive, so I might be trying to stay with fans and stuff while I'm there, which would make for interesting videos. Like, wouldn't that be kind of cool? Like, to stay with people that I've never met, but only through the internet, and then I make videos at their house, kind of like this one, like a traveling, like how you live sort of a thing. I don't know. Could be cool. It's an idea I'm thinking about, you know, to help save costs and all that on the tour. So if you live in one of those cities and you have a couch, or a place on the floor that I can roll out my air mattress, and then hit me up in the emails as well. Right then. It's exciting. We'll talk more about this later, I'm sure. You can get a bottle of water that looks exactly like this one 
for about 10 baht. Or you can buy a bag of six bottles of water for about 35 baht. Now the price varies between 30 and 40 baht, but I walk into this place and the guy wants 35. So I was like, okay, not a problem. Six bottles for 35 baht is an infinitely better deal than one bottle for 10. I was like, that sounds great, dude. Here's 40 baht. I give him the 40. He stares at me for about 10 seconds, goes to the cash register and pulls out a five baht coin. Now this is where it starts to get complicated because I already had a five baht coin and I have a serious aversion to coins. So I took his five baht coin, added my five baht coin to it and said, hey buddy, can you just give me a 10 baht coin instead so I have, so I have one coin instead of two coins? It's just this thing I have about change. I feel like I'm always gonna lose it and it's like I might as well not have it at all. So the guy's like, sure, and he hands me a 10 baht coin. Now I'm about ready to walk out the door with my six bottles and my 10 baht coin when the guy goes, hold on, wait. Yeah? He's like, you gave me 40 baht. Yeah? I gave you 10. Uh, yeah, eventually, yeah. He's like, but it's only 35. So I should have only given you five. And I was like, but then I gave you the five and five plus five is 10, so you gave me the 10. At this point, it should have been clear. But at this point, it wasn't. So he gets out, I shit you not, a calculator. A calculator. And he types in 40 minus 35 equals. And I was like, yeah plus five equals. He starts to think that there's some sort of miscommunication, so he gets out a piece of paper and he draws 35 pointing to himself, a 40 pointing to himself, and a five coming back to me. So then I put a plus five to that, to him, with a 10 and 10. It just got really complicated. There was no communicating with the gentleman. He didn't seem to remember that I had added the five bot to the other five bot to, re none of this mattered. He thought I was stealing five bot from him. So I gave him back the 10, I gave him another 20, just, just for giggles, because it's literally 30 cents. We sat there and went back and forth for about 20 minutes for less than a nickel, for less money than a nickel. Now I'm broke, I'm poor, but God damn it if I can't spare a nickel. Now every time I walk by the store, I walk a little faster. And my friend Cameron went in there yesterday to buy six bottles of water, and the new price is 40 baht. No more of this 35 baht business. I'm guessing just so we didn't have to do the math ever again. Fucking weird. What an adventure. I love you, my little lemon drops. Do join us Friday when we continue our very important work. And a special thank you to everyone who supports, whether you're leaving comments or sending me money. It is greatly appreciated.